If you're like me, you love traveling for the memories made, the places seen, people met, and honestly, normally the food consumed. And a great way to record all of these is through travel journaling. Whether your travel journaling is for capturing those memories, or if it's more that you just want to be organized when you get back so that you can hit the ground running, the question of which supplies to take with you is a good one. Whichever form your travel journaling takes, we're going to have a look at some of the questions you might want to ask yourself when considering your supplies. And I'm also going to show you my essentials for any time I travel. The first thing we're really going to want to do is get real realistic about how much we're actually going to be journaling while we're traveling. I often find that I consistently overestimate the amount of time or energy that I'm going to have to fill in my journal while I'm away. Often I think to myself, yeah, I'll have downtime in the evening to like get in and write down memories or fill in my everyday journal. And seldom does that actually happen like that. Often by the end of the day when I'm traveling, I am completely zonked and really all I want to do is curl up in my bed and pretty much go straight to sleep. How much you want to journal while you're away may differ, so do take some time to consider how much realistically are you going to be journaling while you're away, and also what type of journaling do you want to do while you're away. For instance, when I'm at home, I love doing things like my reading journal, my long-term collections journal, checking in with all of those different spaces. But when I'm away, I don't often have the time, energy, inclination to do all of them. Really for me, it's just going to be making sure that my everyday journal is updated with any trackers that I need to fill in, any tasks, events, notes that I want to write down. And I do like to take along my five-year journal to capture any of the daily memories so that I have a short record of all of them. For things like my reading journal, I'm either not doing all that much reading while I'm away anyway, because that time is being dedicated to other stuff. And even if I am, I'm not really going to want to take time away from my trip to fill in my reading journal specifically. That one can get filled in when I come back. Based on your response to this question though, the next kind of thing you want to consider is which journals in particular you're going to want to check in with. I have a small fleet of notebooks, so reading journal, long-term collections, yearly collections, so on and so forth, and not all of them really need to come with me when I'm traveling. As part of this, we want to consider which journals we're actually going to use while we're away, and those are the ones that we're going to want to take with us. It's also good to consider, are there any journals that you have which have sensitive information? Are there any journals where if you lost them on your trip, that would be quite a big deal. If I lost my reading journal while I'm away, yes, people get to see my innermost thoughts about the books that I've read. It's not really so much of a problem, other than the fact that I really don't want to lose my reading journal because I love it and I'd like to keep it. Something like my everyday journal, though, has a lot more personal information, which might be not so great to be in the hands of somebody I don't know. If you store sensitive information, for instance, passwords, contact details, anything like that in your journal, then losing it while you're away could have some pretty big implications. Any of those journals where it's just going to be safer having them at home, I'd recommend keeping at home. This could mean having a specific journal that comes with you while you travel, whether that be for traveling memories or just jotting down thoughts and feelings. Or it could be planning ahead if you know that you're going to be doing a lot of traveling and not putting that sensitive information in the journals that you might be taking with you. When it comes to picking our travel journaling supplies, size does matter. We want to make sure that we have room in our suitcase or carry-on bag, wherever you're going to be storing your journal, and also all of the other non-notebook supplies that come with it. I find that opting for smaller is better, so a smaller pencil case, a smaller number of supplies in general, a smaller more transportable notebook, and when you have an everyday journal which is literally the size of your face, it can be a little bit hard toting this around. For that reason, I like to go with something a little bit more compact for my travel journals, whether that be dedicated journals for writing down memories or ones that I'm just taking with me to jot down notes. It's also important not just to consider how you're getting to your destination, but also what you're going to be doing when you're there. If you're planning on taking your journal out with you on a day-to-day -day basis, you're also going to want to consider what you're going to be transporting it in in that case too. Having your supplies fit into your backpack or handbag is going to be important to make sure that you can still take them around with you. And you also want to consider how much they weigh, because if you're doing a lot of walking around, you don't want to carry a whole bunch of additional weight. We touched on it before, but one of the things you're going to want to consider when thinking about your journaling supplies is what happens to them if they do get lost. Do you have a system so that they can make their way back to you. I'm personally a little bit apprehensive about putting my home address in any of my journals, especially because I share them on the internet. So rather than having a physical address in there, 
you might just want to have some kind of contact details so people can get in touch if they find your supplies. In terms of your notebook, this can involve writing it inside the front cover. And if you're thinking about other supplies, like your pencil case, this could just be a little card that you slip inside there. If you're like me, you probably have a lot of supplies that you use for your regular journaling, whether they be pens, washi, stickers, or other bits and pieces. The stash can look quite large, but we don't want to take the full stash with us when we're going traveling. Or maybe you do, but if you have a stash my size, then that can be a little bit unreasonable. <laughs> Here we want to be pretty picky about what comes with us, not only because there is that risk of potentially losing it, it's a lot easier to replace a smaller amount of things rather than your whole set, but really it's going to come down to what am I actually going to use on my time away. When it comes to packing in pretty much any category, I try to be pretty selective about what I take with me. I don't want to add a whole bunch of additional weight or room in my suitcase taken up with stuff that isn't actually going to get used. Most of us probably wouldn't pack snow boots if we were going to the beach, and you want to treat your supplies in the same way. If you're not going to need a corner rounder while you're away, you probably don't need to pack it. Also, you could probably corner around your pages when you get back. It doesn't have to happen on your trip specifically. We'll talk more about the supplies that I typically take in a minute, but one of the biggest considerations is which of your supplies are actually going to travel well. This is considering things like the supplies that will or won't make a mess if the cap comes off during transit. Of course, size is a consideration too. We probably want to save on space where possible, so a smaller number of supplies and smaller supplies in general is a good idea. Depending on what you like to use for your journal, you may also want to think about maintenance or upkeep. So things like, do my pens need refilling if they're refillable? Do I need to bring things like an eraser or a sharpener? Some journaling supplies may also need cleaning as you use them, so do you need to bring those things as well? There's also the big consideration of what you can versus cannot take, depending on what kind of transport you're using. We do not want to have our journaling supplies confiscated from us at the border because we tried to take scissors on a plane. Do not do it. <laughs> of course, if you still want to take scissors with you, you can put them in your checked luggage. Just don't try and take them in your pencil case in your carry-on. With all of those considerations done though, what are we actually going to take with us? For me, the first category of supply that I'm going to consider is my journal or journals. And oftentimes I will take my everyday journal when I take a trip. This is my everyday touch. I get into it every day to write things down, but I've actually found that on my recent travel, I haven't really been using it. Coming back to that first consideration of getting realistic about what I'll actually use, because I haven't really been using it on my most recent travel, I'm actually not going to be taking it on future trips. Instead, what I'm going to use is effectively a scribble book where I can just take down some brief notes or I'll just use the notes app on my phone for any of those tasks and to-dos. One of my regular journals that I do like to take with me though is my five-year journal. In this one, I just jot down three lines of text related to the day for each day over a five-year period. And because my memory isn't super great after the fact of what happened on any given day specifically, I like to do this on the day where possible, which is why I take it with me. Just a little bit easier to capture it in the moment rather than trying to remember it after the trip and write it down after the fact. My next biggest consideration though is my pencil case. I typically like to take a pencil case that is big enough to fit all the supplies that I want to take. I don't want to have to take multiple pencil cases, but also small enough that it doesn't really leave a lot of extra room. This is all about saving space in either my case or my travel bag, making sure that I'm not taking up space unnecessarily. And I typically like to go with a pencil case that is attached to my notebook. These are the kind of pencil cases that have a band sewn across the back so that you can just slip them over the front cover of your notebook and they stay secure cured to the journal. The nice part about this though is that if I do by chance misplace my journaling supplies, at least they're all together. This also means that I have the contact details written inside the notebook cover, so if they get picked up by someone, they can get in touch and I can hopefully get those back. This also means that when I get to my destination, I don't have to go rummaging through my bag to find my journal versus my journal supplies stored separately. In terms of what I'm actually storing in my pencil case though, there are two key supplies that always come with me. One of them is my everyday 
writing pen, which I like the Papermate Ink Joy. It's got a good quality of black ink, it travels well, and I have enough of it in stock that I'm okay with taking a couple just in case one runs out and then the next one like doesn't work or something. It's always good to have a backup. And the other supply is always a ruler. In particular, I like to have a small clear ruler, one that fits inside the pencil case nicely and also spans the entire length of my journal because I just find it awkward to use something that's smaller than the full length of my journal when I'm trying to do layouts. When it comes to other journaling supplies though, I do have a couple of stock standard items that are pretty much always in my pencil case and they pretty much always come along with me too. Those ones being a pencil and an eraser. They aren't necessarily going to get used on every single trip, but I like to have them there just in case. While the ones we've talked about so far are the stock standard, the ones that come on pretty much any trip, everything else has a tendency to change. This really depends on where I'm going and what I'm doing, but some of the supplies actually rely on each other or are dictated by each other. For instance, if I do decide to take my everyday journal, then I typically like to take the pens associated with whatever theme I'm working on at the time. If there are any tombos or dot markers that are tied to the theme that I'm using at that time, I'll bring those along as well. In having selected the materials for those themes, I do typically try ahead of time to make sure that there aren't too many supplies. Normally I know ahead of time that I'm traveling, so when picking out the materials for those themes, I'll try and limit them so I don't have as much to take when I go traveling. The same can be said though for this travel journal as well. This one is specifically for Go Wild conferences, so for any theme that I'm doing in this notebook, I'll take the supplies associated with that theme and its decoration so that I have them handy if I want to put any extra in while I'm away. Outside of these supplies though, it can be good to think about what else might be useful for you. For instance, if you're doing travel journaling in a sense of memory keeping, it could be really useful to bring a small pair of travel scissors, ones that you can put inside your checked bag, not your carry-on, and also a glue tape roller mainly so that you can cut down and stick in any pieces of ephemera as you collect them. You may also want to take a travel size photo printer so that you can snap pictures and print them off as you go and do your journaling in the moment so that you can capture those memories when they're most fresh. I don't have a colored travel printer myself, but I know they are quite popular. I would be interested in getting one, but I also know that I'm not very good at journaling while I'm away. So I could just wait until I get back and print them off on my regular home printer. In trying to get an appreciation for my full set of traveling supplies. This can be a little bit easier with an example. So on my upcoming trip to the US, I'm gonna be taking my five year journal and my go wild journal, but I'm gonna be leaving my everyday journal at home. In terms of my pencil case, I'll be taking this one, which I'll attach to the front of my five year journal. And inside of that, I will have my regular writing pen, my small ruler, a pencil, an eraser, the dot marker that I'm using in my five year journal, and then the small collection of pens that I'm using for decoration in the Go Wild journal. Now as we have some ideas about what we're taking with us for our travel journaling, it can be good to consider what kind of layouts could we use while we're away. If you're looking for travel journal inspiration, then this video is the next one to check out. In that one we have 30 different ideas for your travel journal, so click or tap on that one and I'll see you over there.